Hi, this is Matt Robertson, and welcome to the Team Roping Channel. This is hopefully your first lesson on roping the dummy for the first time. If you haven't seen the video on building a loop, parts of the rope, swing, and feed, please go back and watch that first. Otherwise, you're going to get a little bit lost in this video. Uh, it's a short 10-minute video, and it'll show you all the proper prerequisites to get ready for this video. Also, I'm not going to repeat myself very much. You can always rewind the video and watch it again, so we'll try to keep this as short and sweet as possible. All right, so the first thing we're going to need is equipment. So, obviously, you're going to need a rope, dummy, and a glove. Um, at this time, you don't need to go build an arena and buy a bunch of cattle and and uh, go all out and spend a bunch of money on a rig. I, I'd, I'd like for you to do things as efficient as, as efficient and as smart as possible, especially when it comes to financially. And so first thing you're gonna need is a rope. This is an extra soft head rope. It's uh, by Fastback, it's called an Excalibur. It's my favorite head rope. Um, you can get a rope online at NRS world.com or you can go to your local tax store and find an extra soft there it's really nice to uh, have an extra soft it's just the perfect lay or stiffness of a rope and uh, if you got an extra extra soft it would be a little too limber and it might close up in your swing be kind of hard to keep open and also if you had a soft that's a little bit stiffer than an extra soft then it would be a little bit harder to turn over and it might be a little harder on your shoulder. So the extra soft is the perfect rope to start out with. Also, if you can get to a light, little bit lighter rope, you can that will help your shoulder and kind of learn as well. And uh, you can go on most websites from the rope company and they'll tell you which ones are the lightest. You're also gonna need a glove. This is a nice cotton glove. It's a cheap glove. Um, they're only about a dollar a piece, sometimes a little bit more. Um, there's some fancier gloves out there that cost more. They're going to last a little bit longer, but uh, I really like the feel and the texture for these for these cotton gloves. Um, it gives your rope more consistency feeling, makes it easier to feed. You're also going to need a rope and dummy. These are old mojo horns. Um, I don't know if they make those anymore or not. Um, rank racks are kind of the new thing now. They got like a carpet over the head and they got the real horns that come out you can look into those they're also at nrsworld.com sometimes your local tax stores will have open dummies a lot of times they have like plastic heads they got little horns some have bigger horns the plastic ones are okay but they don't last very long and they are a little cheaper than these but they both work great all of those horns go into a bale now there are some uh plastic dummies that don't make a mess that you can rope as well um, and they're okay to get started on but once you get better and get a little bit more professional you're going to want to get to a more of a real dummy like this so you could actually save yourself some money by just buying this to start out with all right so now let's get into the teaching part of the lesson so number one you're going to need a good position um, a perfect position is going to be, you're going to be back from the horns probably about six to seven feet, somewhere in there. Maybe a little less if you're a little bit shorter or a kid. Play with that, um, but that's going to be the best place to start. Also, you're going to want to be about a foot and a half um, away from the left side of the steer from your right side of your foot here. And that's a good place to start. Next, we need to know the dimensions of our rope. So you want, this is our tail. It's gonna hang down about two to three feet. We got coils that are all gonna lay nice and flat in our hand. That way they come off nice and even. That way if you get your rope hung up or you wanna start reaching a little bit more and letting those coils come out evenly, you want them to all be nice and even in your hand. They'll wrap a little bit, but you don't wanna be, you know, crisscrossed. Then you got the rope between your hands and this is a good place to start out with we're going to feed into that a little bit but to start out you'll see it just kind of matches my coils down here if my hands are together and that's a good place to start 
Then with our spoke, we're gonna put our hondu in our left hand, stre stretch our left hand out like we're shooting a bow, and we're gonna go right to our peck here, and that's the perfect dimensions for your, for your spoke. Then our loop, I'm gonna have to get a little bigger loop. We want it to be, we're gonna put our foot under the tip, and we're gonna come up to that same area. So once you've got all your dimensions correct, then you can rope the dummy a lot easier without creating any bad habits. So now I'm in the perfect position. I got my loop ready. Now we're gonna work on the tuck. And I'm gonna turn my body sideways real quick so you can see how we tuck our rope. Tucking your rope is really important. It keeps you from roping, catching a leg on yourself when you bring your rope up. Sometimes people will drop it down too low and they'll catch a leg on their horse. And uh, with headers, most NFR great jackpot headers, they start out in this position right here. And that's how they get that first swing off. Um, you'll see at the NFR and some rodeos, guys will cock it back like this, and then they'll swing like that. Um, once you get to a certain level, that's fine. But to start out with, please do the tuck. Um, this makes it a little harder to ride across the line. You can lose your balance a little easier and it can actually hurt you more than it can help you. But if you're down here, then you're basically in a position where you're balanced and you can make a nice smooth um, first couple jumps coming out of that box because them horses leave pretty hard and you want to be balanced to start out with. Get that hand back like this. It can rock you back, rock you off to the side. It can even I've seen people, some people fall off trying to do it, so be careful with that. <clears throat> so tuck in a rope. So what people what you want to do is swing that rope out and then pop it underneath that armpit and then squeeze. It'll feel kind of weird at first, but after a while you get kind of used to it. Then when you go to start your swing, your hand is going to come down and out. And then you're going to pop that rope straight out where your hand is like this. So it's a... Uh, if you're in this position here, you go down, out, up to a straight position here, and then your hand stays straight all the way to in front of your face like this. Notice my thumb is down. I mean, I'm gonna have my thumb around my rope, but my thumb's gonna be down. My palm is facing to the right, and the back of my hand's coming across. Then you're, you're gonna come up like this, you're going to keep your tip, if you swing too fast, your tip's going to get caught up behind your hand. You want to, your hand wants, you want to move your hand the same speed as your tip and come around. Same thing here. Then you roll that shoulder, see that roll, and it puts you back into this position right here. So what I want you to do is without a rope, take your hand, come down, out, straight, and then a nice straight motion all the way to your front of your face, then elbow up, hand comes back around, and then right here where my shoulder, my hand gets even with my shoulder straight across, that's when I'm gonna roll, see that, roll, that elbow roll up, my shoulder rolls up, and it puts you into that position right here. Now you want your, when you're swinging, you want your hand, you almost wanna feel like you're roping the dummy every time you're coming across, so it's like, and your hand, your, right the right horn, your hand's like this, and then when your hand gets to the left horn, that's when your hand turns over like this. And what that does is it creates a nice, perfect pathway for your throw. So go ahead and do that a couple times, and then try it with a rope. So we're gonna pop, you can even see, I, I have shifted my shoulder back a little bit like this. And then we come out, and there's your swing. I'm gonna swing real slow to kind of show you. And at first, you want to swing kind of big. If you swing real tight, that's, that is a professional um, level. But to get started, go ahead and start out with a nice big swing like this. And then that will help you get it moving smooth. You can feel your tip a little better. And you're not, you're not going to get into a speed jam. So once you've got your swing comfortable, then you have to learn to feed your rope. And 
in the first video before this one, 0 0.5, how to build a loop feed swing, we talk about feeding the rope. And so what you're going to want to do is watch that video, go back, make sure you've got feeding down. There's a little feeding drill there where we do the windmill. And then you can put it in your swing. So one swing and then feed and then stay there for as long as you want. Some people do feed on their last swing. That's fine, but that can cue your horse and it can create some problems if you're not careful. Some, a lot of pros swing on their first swing and then they stay in a relatively same dimensions when they go to throw. If you have too much between your hands and you go to throw, it's going to be hard to control and makes it easy to split the horns because there won't be hardly any right to left motion. But if you got a lot less between your hands, it's going to give you more control and it's going to be a lot easier to rope, especially if you get close. If you get really close, you're going to want less between your hands. So work on feeding, very important. Um, gives your rope balance, stability, accuracy, control, makes it a lot easier. So please don't keep that out of your game. Then when you go to throw, number one, while you're swinging, you want to be pointing at the right horn. So if I was, if I had a, if I had a gun coming right out of my chest, it would be pointing straight at that right horn. So I'm basically swinging over the right horn every single time. And then when my hand gets here, I'm going to turn that wrist over. Then when I go to throw, I'm going to let go as soon from my eyesight down to the horns. As soon as I can see that tip just about getting there, I'm going to let go here. And I'm going to have this nice right to left motion with my hand. And the whole time we're doing this, even though we're pointing our body towards the right horn, we're going to look at the base of the left horn. Wherever you look is where your hand is going to finish. So basically your swing catches the right horn and then your throw catches the left horn. And when you combine those two, then it brings a nice right to left motion. That right to left motion brings that rope across and then when it hooks the horns, then your rope will start to figure eight, curl. And if you throw a perfect loop, it'll come up over on top of his back. So let's do this really slow. Hand down, out, hand comes all the way across. Maybe a little less spoke, all the way across. Now I'm gonna speed up my swing slowly. I'm looking at the left horn and my swing's over the right horn. And then I'm gonna throw it just across, just like that. Okay, so now let's get into our slack. So let me throw a little better loop here. There we go, let's see how that curl came up and over. Almost over, it was almost a perfect loop. So now when we go to grab our slack, our hand finishes in our line of sight to the base of the left horn. And then all we gotta do is keep our palms down. We pop that elbow out a little bit. This becomes a hook and we hook that rope just like this. Then you wanna grip firmly with your left hand while you slide your slack straight out, just like this. The old school way is to pull your slack back to here. And the problem with that is then you gotta come up and around to get your dally. If you pull your slack down, below your belt, and across that steer's back, you, sh you shouldn't wave it off. I mean, that's a perfect, that's almost the same as this, except it's a little bit farther to the right. Then you have that nice, entry to get your dally it makes it a lot easier a lot safer and a lot more efficient and the whole time you want to keep this hand like you're riding your horse because you will be riding your horse down the road a lot of people when they pull their slack sometimes they go like this and i imagine if you did that on a horse you're going to turn him out really fast and you're going to have a hard time getting your dally so what you want to do is keep your hand up here and then when you go to dally you, you usually pick your hand up and then when you want your horse to turn, you're gonna either rein him out a little bit if he's young, but if he's a nice older horse, you just 
give him a little bit of slack in the reins and that'll let him go. You're kind of like hold, hold, hold. And then when you want him to go, you just give him a little slack and then they go. And if you're going to start out, you're definitely going to want to get an older horse. So anyway, that is all there is to roping the dummy. Once you get really good at roping the dummy, um, you can do, you know, one, two swing and rope it. You can keep your feet, you know, solid. There's a couple little drills you can do. Um, another thing you can do, and this is my favorite, is you can do little baby steps up to it. And then once you get in position, then you just take your throw. What you do not want to do is you don't want to get sized up and then take a big step in your throw. You, because you, your horse, number one, does not ever do that. And number two, you can get away with cheating a little bit and you won't finish your throw all the way and it can cause a lot of bad problems. I've had so many students over the years, they can catch the dummy every single time, but they can't catch on a horse. And that's the number one reason. So they're taking a big step right in their throw and that's very unrealistic. So try to stay away from that. Try to keep your feet solid or you can do the little baby steps, which is a lot harder. And then you can start doing, you know, one swing and, and rope it that way and just little drills get as good as you can with this rope try to get about 30 40 throws in, in the morning maybe another 30 40 throws in at night your shoulder is going to get a little bit sore from muscle soreness you're going to use some muscles you're not used to um, just keep giving it time and uh, within a couple weeks you should have a good shoulders for roping and it shouldn't feel near as bad and then once you can really rope the dummy correctly and you're doing everything right, it's kind of getting boring and you can catch this thing 50 to 100 times in a row from this spot right here, then you should start looking into uh, the next step and we'll get into that in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you're in Bozeman, Montana in the summertime or Wickenburg, Arizona in the wintertime and you want some roping lessons. I'll dang sure help you out, but right now enjoy these free videos. Hopefully they get you started in the right direction and get you uh, roping steers and winning the money. So thanks for watching. Good luck on the trail and rope tough.